Dear viewers, welcome to our channel again. In the mysterious deep sea, the submarine is like a lurking beast, always ready to capture prey or avoid danger. The key equipment that allows this beast to perform its mission accurately is the attack periscope and the photoelectric mast. Today, we will delve into the mysteries of these devices and reveal their indispensable in deep sea operations. What is the purpose of the submarine's mast? In submarines, the mast plays a variety of important roles. The snorkel ensures that the submarine can take in air. When diving, the radar antenna is used to actively search for surface targets. The attack periscope observes the target below the surface through optical principles, and the multifunction mast integrates electronic reconnaissance, suppression, and radar search functions. So, what is the difference between the attack periscope and the photoelectric mast? Why is the photoelectric mast more flexible? Finally, why do modern submarines still need to retain the traditional periscope rather than rely entirely on the photoelectric mast? What is the logic behind this design? Each type of rod-like device on a submarine has its own special function. First, the snorkel is necessary for both nuclear and conventional submarines to exchange gases during diving voyages. Then there is the radar antenna which sends and receives electromagnetic waves like traditional radar to actively detect enemy targets on the surface. Then there is the attack periscope, which uses optical principles to refract the scene of the water surface into the water. Like a camera with an optical viewfinder, equipped with a complete fire control system for sea attacks. The multifunction mast is a system that integrates electronic reconnaissance, electronic suppression, and radar search functions. The electronic support mast is mainly responsible for passively receiving electromagnetic signals from the water surface to determine the location coordinates of the radiation source. The power supply mast provides the necessary electrical energy for the submarine. In addition, the communication antenna and the reconnaissance antenna are responsible for communication and intelligence gathering respectively. The photoelectric mass is divided into two types, attack type and search type. The former is mainly used for sea attacks, and the latter is used for sea and air searches, including navigation tasks. Attack type optoelectronic masts can be regarded as high-tech micro-single cameras, which replace traditional eye mirrors with screens and cameras, allowing the operator to directly see the images captured by the camera simplifying interaction with fire control and search systems. The search type optoelectronic masts, on the other hand, require a large pitch angle to detect targets such as aircraft in the sky. In short, although both attack periscopes and attack type optoelectronic masts are used to launch attacks on the sea, there are differences in technology and use. Periscopes rely on optical devices to transmit images, well, optoelectronic masts directly present real-time images through cameras, and the latter usually has higher technology content and more complex functions. Questions about SLR cameras and microcameras? In fact, the attack periscope uses optical refraction technology. A basic version of the periscope can consist of a vertical pipe and to flat mirrors arranged at a 45-degree angle. When the upper part of the periscope is aimed at the target. The lower mirror reflects the image of the target for the observer to see. However, the design of the periscope on military submarines is more complicated. Optical periscope was invented as early as 1906, and this mirror-based observation technology was widely used during World War II. However, there are several problems with such a system. First, the traditional periscope needs to extend from the top of the submarine's conning tower to the bottom, which limits the layout of the whole structure and internal space. Second, it allows only one person to observe at a time, usually the captain alone, which results in less timely information transmission. Third, the installation of the periscope must open holes in the pressure shell of the submarine which is a challenge to the structural strength and ceiling of the submarine. In order to solve these problems, people have adopted photoelectric mast technology. This technology uses cables to connect cameras and monitors, just like using a computer to view surveillance footage. 
In this way, observers can monitor the external environment of the submarine from any position and can also share the video with others so that information can be shared and transmitted in real time. In short, the photoelectric mast is like an optical network that transmits data, making observation more convenient and efficient. We can clearly identify the differences between traditional periscopes and photoelectric masts. Although modern technology provides more advanced camera equipment, modern submarines still choose to keep traditional periscopes. The reason is the reliability of digital equipment. They contain complex electronic components that often need to be replaced, rather than repaired in the event of failure. Considering that submarines may be at sea for months, this vulnerability can lead to the risk of not being able to make external observations. This is rarely the case with traditional periscopes. So even modern submarines equipped with photoelectric masts still need to install traditional periscopes as backup. As for the communication antennas in the picture, they are used for communication needs in different scenarios. Since submarines need to exchange information with various platforms, involving a variety of frequency bands. These communication antennas can cover a wide range of bands from ultra-low frequency to ultra-high frequency. Some submarines are also specially equipped with dedicated satellite communication antennas. Finally, the functional difference between the reconnaissance antenna and the radar antenna we see is similar to the difference between passive and active sonar. The reconnaissance antenna specializes in receiving signals and localizes by analyzing the position of the radiation source, while the radar antenna emits and receives electromagnetic waves to detect the target. When both parties use their respective antennas for reconnaissance, the final competition is the advanced nature of the equipment. Finally, I summarized today's video, hoping to provide you with some inspiration and value. While considering future submarine designs, we must recognize that with the increase in global ocean activities and the continuous advancement of anti-submarine technology, traditional covert means may no longer be sufficient to meet future challenges. Therefore, in addition to improving stealth technology, we also need to explore new materials and structural designs that can absorb or disperse sound waves and reduce the submarine's acoustic signature thus significantly improving its ability to conceal underwater. At the same time, non-acoustic detection technologies such as magnetic anomaly detection are also evolving, which means that future submarine designs will also need to include the ability to counter these detection means. For example, by employing special degaussing designs and materials to reduce the submarine's magnetic signature, the probability of being detected can be effectively reduced. In addition, the use of artificial intelligence-assisted decision-making systems can improve the efficiency of tactical planning, enabling submarines to respond quickly in complex environments and maintain tactical unpredictability. Another key point is sustainability, as submarines are required to perform long-term missions at sea. It is essential to ensure that their energy systems are efficient and reliable. While nuclear power offers potential for long-term navigation, innovations in conventional powertrains are just as important, such as advances in battery technology and desalination technology, which will help enhance the submarine's ability to operate independently. Finally, considering the welfare of the crew and operational effectiveness, Future submarine designs should focus more on livability and human factors engineering, optimizing the layout of internal spaces, providing better rest and recreation facilities, and ensuring air quality and suitable temperatures are all important aspects of supporting the long-term health and morale of the crew. At the same time, strengthening the application of virtual reality and simulation training systems can help sailors conduct actual combat drills without exposure to risks and improve their ability to respond to emergencies. In conclusion, the success of future submarine design will depend on the integration and innovation of multidisciplinary technologies as well as in-depth understanding of personnel needs. Only in this way can we ensure that submarines maintain their advantages in an increasingly complex security environment.
and continue to serve the security and interests of the country. Dear, welcome to share in the comment area. This concludes today's video. See you next time for exciting content. Bye-bye.